Hey guys, it's Hart. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be breaking down the Thursday night football game we have between the Bucks and Bills uh, for tomorrow night here on DraftKings. 500k up top to first place. So I'll be talking through my favorite plays, going through some values to get different uh, to help get contrarian to kind of take down that 500k to first. Hopefully uh, one of you or I do that, uh, but as well as my core plays for this slate tomorrow, as well as building out a potential lineup. So make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And let's get right into this breakdown here. So if you guys do play DraftKings DFS for the NBA, check out my videos. I uh, just started doing that, but that should be out uh, tonight or last night when this is uploaded uh, Thursday morning. But we have the Bucks Bills, nine-point spread, 43 game total there. So moving over to this game here, we'll start off with the Tampa Bay side here. Uh, obviously, there's some big news there for the Buffalo side in terms of the tight end position, but we'll get there in a second. Uh, but right now, we can see uh, Baker is listed questionable here for this game. Uh, due to a knee injury, uh, you know, he's lo logged a limited practice there, a full practice Wednesday. So it looks like he should be good to go, but there's definitely some um, question marks on if he is. But if he is not good to go, really, really makes this game gross, and it really does not uh, make this game appealing at all. To have to look to a Kyle Trask, potentially, or a Wolford. Uh, so hopefully, Baker Mayfield is good to go. But in terms of snap count, we'll take a quick look at their snap count uh, from last week. As you can see, obviously, for the running back position, it's still the Rashad White show. Now, Keyshawn Vaughn is, you know, seen about 20 to 25% of the snaps of the past, you know, three weeks. Uh, but still, it's going to be the Keish or Rashad White show there. Keyshawn Vaughn will see uh, probably a fourth of the snaps there. But 75% or more should go to Rashad White. In terms of wide receivers, obviously, Jeff Gooden and Mike Evans is wide receiver one and two. Trey Palmer would be wide receiver three. And they have been mixing in some Devin Tompkins and Rakeem Jarrett there, wide receiver four and five. But obviously the three main ones are Goodwin, Evans, and Palmer. And then for the tight end position, it's pretty much been the K-Dot and show. And that's really pretty much it. You know, Coke Heift is getting some snaps, but I don't even know if he's gotten a target yet for these games here. Uh, he's gotten three across the season so far, and they all came from the week one. That's it. So he hasn't seen any uh, recently, but obviously to show down, weirder things can happen. And then we'll take a quick look at the Buffalo Bills snaps real fast because as I mentioned the big news there for that side is uh, you know Goodwin's questionable as well, uh, so we can look at that uh, with a neck worry. But he fought up limited practice in a full at Wednesday, so kind of the same thing with Baker, uh, limited edit first, but then full practices, uh, so they should be good to go tomorrow. But obviously keep updated with the news. But for the Bills side here, uh, we'll go to snap counts real fast. Obviously the big news there. Is that there's no Dawson Knox. He needs wrist surgery, so he'll be out a few weeks. Uh, so it's pretty much, I think there's only one tight end they have available right now. Uh, we'll have to get to that in a second. But for the running back position here, uh, the snaps have really you know, dropped down from James Cook. As you can see, you know, about 60% the first three weeks, and then dropped down to 40% week four, back up to 62 for week five, and then 49 for week six, 52 for week seven. So they have been looking to Latavius Murray. To kind of be the backup there, especially when they get to the goal line. You know, they do look to Latavius Murray. So he's definitely an option for this late tomorrow. I still really like James Cook, but as you can see, you know, Latavius Murray is seeing a decent amount of snaps. Wide receiver position, we have Gabe Davis, wide receiver, you know, one and two, or, you know, Stephon Diggs, wide receiver one, Gabe Davis, wide receiver two. They re rarely leave the field. In terms of wide receiver three, they use a mix of these small, you know, quick, fast guys, Trent Sherfield. Khalil Shakur, and Deontay Hardy. Uh, so definitely all three are viable and in play for the slate. And then tight end position, as you can see, it was pretty much Dawson Knox as like the main tight end one, but they did use uh, Dalton Kincaid a ton. And obviously with Dalton Knox being out, uh, we're going to have to look to Dalton Kincaid as the wide receiver, or excuse me, tight end one. And then Quinn Morris, I think is questionable. He might not play. So the, the, right now they might have to bring up like a practice squad tight end uh, there for the Bills side. Let's take a quick look here. I see, you know, Harris is on IR. Yeah, Quentin Morris has already been ruled out. So, you know, Dawson Knox sideline, Morris is out. It looks like Joel Wilson will be elevated, but I don't even know if he's on this. I guess he is, but don't love that. I mean, if you're feeling very frisky, you could definitely go to him. But yeah, as of right now, uh, it's pretty much going to be the Dawson Knox show. But getting back over to Tampa Bay real fast here. On the Tampa Bay side, obviously Mike Evans, 10,000. Looks great there. Uh, he's going to be obviously the most popular wide receiver for uh, the Buck side. I mean, as you can see, he's had some boom games. Should be averaging about eight to ten targets per game there. Uh, obviously, a big play wide receiver. 
Uh, Godwin's is more so kind of the middle of the field, the shorter routes. Evans is more so the fades, the big, big boom plays, the big, uh, you know, deep posts, stuff like that. So I do have a good amount of interest in Mike Evans, but it really comes down to ownership for me between Evans and Godwin. Uh, I'm going to play one of them, uh, but as I said, it comes down to ownership on which one I'm going to go to. I'm assuming Evans will be more popular, even though he's, you know, $2,200 more expensive than Godwin. Uh, but that's just, you know, people will box score watch, and that does draw attention away from Goodwin, which I do like going to Goodwin. Baker Mayfield coming in at 9,200. I mean, he's been decent for the Bucs. You know, as you can see, there are some low games for him, uh, but he does have some upside into the 20s. He can rush the ball. Uh, he's not afraid to do it. Uh, but yeah, I think Baker Mayfield's a decent play. Not a must play for a you know, QB like him who, uh, you know, he, his wide receivers can go off for, game, for big games, but, you know, Baker could still be for like 12 fantasy points. So uh, really it comes down to ownership for me if I'm going to play Baker at all or not. But Rashad White, uh, pretty expensive price tag, has not been efficient. But, you know, he should get back to seeing the, you know, double digit, you know, close to 15 rushing attempts. And then he will see targets out of the backfield. Saw six last game. So, I mean, he's seen a decent amount of opportunities. Uh, it just hasn't been efficient. Hasn't seen a touchdown since week two. Uh, but I, I do like the upside there with him with all those opportunities. 8,000. Uh, I think he's a solid play, especially if he's any pretty low owned. Godwin. Now, if Godwin's going to be more expensive or more owned than uh, Evans, I don't mind going to Evans. I actually don't mind playing both of them either. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, Godwin's seen a ton of targets the past three weeks, 11, 7, and 12. Um, so maybe he does draw some more ownership compared to Evans, who's only seen, I think it was an 8, 10, and 8. Uh, but yeah, I think both are very, very strong plays. Uh, both are the you know one and two options here for the Tampa Bay passing attack. Moving on down here to McLaughlin, the kicker. The kickers are always <clears throat> viable if you want to go that route on the showdown slates. Then we have wide receiver here, Trey Palmer. Um, hasn't seen a ton of targets. Obviously, week six, he did pop off there with seven. I think that's because Mike Evans left the game, uh, potentially. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Trey Palmer is definitely an option there, 4,200. Don't love the price tag, but you know he'll see a couple targets uh, here and there. Bucks D, as I mentioned, always, you know, defenses are always in play. Um, it just comes down to, can they get, a, you know, pick six? If they can, they'll be worth it. If not, they usually don't end up being worth it. Kadon looks like a very solid value play. You know, saw six targets, the most since week two. Uh, but yeah, he'll get peppered right here and there randomly. Once again, kind of like Godwin, more of a short bro guy. Uh, but yeah, if he's going to see, you know, four to six targets, he's definitely firmly in play there as a nice value at 3,000. 3, same thing with Tompkins. We saw that they will use uh, kind of these random wide receivers off the bench there. Saw three targets. Has seen, you know, four, pretty much four targets since week three in every single game. Kind of more of a gadget guy there. Pretty strong, quick guy. But uh, yeah, 1,600, another very strong value option. Keyshawn Vaughn is definitely an option. You know, he is seeing rushing attempts. Could vulture a TD. He's always in play if you're feeling frisky. Uh, and that's really, it's there. Um, you know, Rakeem Jarrett seen a few targets, but nothing too crazy there. I'd just stick with, you know, Tompkins if you're going to go for the cheaper route for the Tampa Bay side. For the Buff side here, obviously it's going to be hard not to play Jared Allen. Uh, he's got, you know, enough upside to be a captain play, especially with the rough rushing upside, which we really haven't seen uh, since week three there uh, with 46 rushing yards and touchdown. Since then, he's been pretty, pretty quiet in terms of rushing. So I do really like him to have kind of a bounce back rushing game here. Not like he's looking to, you know, rush the ball, but we know he has that upside there. He can go for 300 plus passing yards as well, multiple touchdowns. So I do think Jared Allen, even though he's the most expensive, is my favorite captain play on the slate. Um, and for good reason. Stephon Diggs uh, is a great option here. Seen just a ton, a ton of targets. 11, 16, 12. I think it should continue. Uh, the Bucks defense is actually pretty decent, but still, I mean, it's Stephon Diggs. Uh, you know, coming off a game where he only had six catches for uh, 58 yards, touchdown. You know, 17 points, solid, I guess, fancy score-wise, but you're, you're, he's going to want it, uh, you know, a lot better of a game uh, than what he did last week. So, obviously, you really like both those two. They're gonna, both going to be super, super popular, but for good reason. James Cook, I think, is a very strong play here. Um, I, I do think people will pay up for Allen and Stephon Diggs, and they'll pay down for the cheaper options. I, I, do, th I do think, you know, James Cook and Rashad White will both go overlooked. Uh, they both really haven't been that efficient the past few weeks, but they're both seeing, you know, around 15 – Russian opportunities, and they're both seeing targets out of the backfield. So I, I think both are very strong plays. I do think James Cook will be more popular than Rashad White, but I do really like both a lot here for this slate tomorrow, uh, especially if you want to get different off of like the chalky wide receivers of Goodwin, Evans, and um, Stephon Diggs. Gabe Davis is more of a contrarian play. Like if you're not going to be playing Stephon Diggs, you'd probably want to play Gabe Davis. He's more of a boomer bust guy there. It really just 
depends on if he's going to get a touchdown for a long catch or not it's because he's not really a possession guy. Obviously, it's a short on slate. Anything can happen, but that's kind of the, the analysis there. It's very just boomer bust for Gabe Davis. Otherwise, you know, he's really struggled recently, but he has seen the target. So it's not the best price tag for him, but he's a nice contrarian piece. As I mentioned, kickers are always in play. I don't love 5,400 for Tyler Bass, and he's been struggling as well. So maybe it's a buy low opportunity uh, if you're one of those people. Uh, he does have the upside. He is usually a pretty, pretty good kicker, but kind of on that struggle bus right now, not the best price tag for him. As I mentioned, Dalton Kincaid uh, going to be the lonesome tight end on this roster, even though they are bringing someone up. But still, uh, you know, he's already seen a decent amount of targets, even when he's splitting the field with Knox. But now that he's going to be the main tight end, uh, he comes in just way too good of a price tag there at 5,000. He's going to be super popular. So unless he was like 80% owned, I don't think you need to, I don't think that will happen, but he'll probably be around 50% owned, if not 60. Uh, I guess you can make the, you can definitely make the argument to fade him. Uh, but still, I do think he'll see at least five, six targets here in this spot in this game here. Uh, so that definitely makes him a strong play there at 5,000. Bill's defense always in play. I'm sure some people will go to them, uh, but they have not looked great recently. Uh, you know, but May- Baker Mayfield is known to turn over the ball, so they could definitely get a few picks there, maybe a pick six off of Baker, because uh, he is risky at times. So I, I don't mind taking a you know risky shot on them there. Uh, Khalil Shakur, um, you know, we'll see some random targets. Obviously, him, uh, Sherfield, and Hardy, they're all kind of quick gadget guys. Nothing too too crazy. You know, they're really just going to rely on um, you know Gabe Davis, James Cook, Stephon Diggs, and Dalton Kincaid, and then. If you're going to be playing one of these guys, it's going to be more so just you You really hope they get their touchdown. Otherwise, you really need a huge, huge play, like a 60, 70, 80-yard catch from them. Otherwise, they're just not going to see enough volume to be viable. Uh, but that's showdown. You know, you got to have to take those chances. Um, if I had to land on one, it'd probably be Hardy. Um, it just seems like he's the most involved, even though Shakir had more targets the last game. But overall, across the, the first six, seven games, I do think Hardy is probably the best out of those three. Uh, my favorite one, I, I like to take a dart throw on. Um, and that's really it. As I mentioned, you know, they will bring up Wilson. If you want to take an absolute dart throw, a Hail Mary shot there, you can. But I'm not going to go there. Uh, but yeah, in terms of this slate, there's a lot of different paths to go. A lot of different routes I like. Uh, but right now, I do think I'm going to go with the Bills onslaught. I'm sure it'll be pretty, pretty popular. but. Um, it's hard not to love Josh Allen there in the captain spot with his upside, like Dalton Kincaid there. Uh, I, I do like getting to the running backs here if you want to get a little bit different. You know, James Cook there and Rashad White on the other side. It's not the best, but still, you know, the, the defense there for uh, Buffalo has not been the best against the run. So it is a solid spot there for Rashad White, who has been pretty, pretty inefficient. It leaves us 5,300 left over. So if we wanted to get down to like a cheap value play, you could definitely throw in hard if you wanted to. Um, you know, hopefully he gets a touchdown. It's one of those big plays, one of those gadget plays. It leaves you with 9,700 left over. And that can, you know, you can pay for Baker Mayfield. You can pay for Godwin. Um, so if you wanted to go Godwin, we could do that. 1,900 left over. You don't have to pay for Hardy. 2,900 left over. We can get to, um, you know, Tompkins on the Tampa Bay side, who has seen, you know, four straight targets pretty much every single game since week three. Obviously with only three last week, but still, it looks like they're definitely getting involved. So, I don't mind throwing him in there for that. Uh, but obviously, you can pay down off Rashad White. Uh, we can get to Godwin. Or, you know, you can pay up for Mike Evans if you wanted. Uh, leaves with 900. We have both wide receivers for the Tampa Bay side. We have Josh Allen, Kincaid, James Cook. We could pay for, you know, Rashad Vaughn. Uh, if you wanted, you know, get that Tampa Bay running back there in the backup. Or we can, you know, look to a Trent Sherfield who should see some snaps there. But nothing too, too crazy there. I don't love that one. Uh, I do like the the first lineup build I kind of went with, uh, with Rashad White, kind of the both running backs there, and paying down for like uh, a Hardy at a thousand. But in terms of core plays, I think right now it is definitely going to be these three, and then on the Tampa Bay side, um, on the Tampa Bay side, it'll probably be. It'll probably be. Godwin. My kind of four core places right now is Allen, Kincaid, Cook, and Godwin. Obviously, you know, taking Allen out of the cap- captain spot will definitely open up uh, a lot more flexibility in your lineups. Um, but if you take him out of the captain spot, I'd say my favorite captains, if you do that, would probably be James Cook, Stefan Diggs, or Chris Godwin. That's kind of the route I'm looking at for those captains. 
But as I mentioned right now, my kind of early look core plays are going to be Josh Allen there in the captain spot. Dalton Kincaid, James Cook, Godwin. I don't feel great about, you know, fading Stephon Diggs, so I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, taking him out, taking you know, James Cook out, throwing in Stephon Diggs, uh, leaving Godwin in there. Uh, but still, I'm still going to decide uh, by, the, you know, by tomorrow kind of what happens with that. But right now, I, I do really like, you know, help getting a little bit more contrarian going to James Cook instead of Godwin. But right now, love, obviously, Josh Allen captain spot. Kincaid just kind of looks like a lock and load play there at the flex. Cook allows us to get different here with the the Allen captain there. Uh, you know, James Cook can catch passes out of the backfield, uh, seeing like 15 rushing attempts per game. So a solid spot there in terms of opportunities. And then Godwin's just been a very, very strong play there in the mid-range. So I like him at 7,800. So once again, those are the four core plays right now. So make sure you hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video.